Out in the field, you can actually really tell how well balanced this rifle is. Even with a sound moderator fitted and quite a heavy Steiner Ranger scope, it, it just it does balance incredibly well. I've got to be honest with you, even offhand. Um, also, one other feature as well, once you cock the rifle and it's cocked, it needs very little effort to actually open it again. You may think, well, that's not very safe, a bit counterintuitive. You actually have the safety bar that comes up and as the pressure builds in the cartridge, it actually causes those eight lugs to really bite in and it will not, if you accidentally bang it, knock it about, it will not come unlocked. So, but if you feel unsafe with it, if you want to just put the gun on safe and then that locks the bolt anyway. You don't need it, you don't need it. You know, I've used it out in the field shooting deer and it's been absolutely spot on to be honest with you. Britta's new and first centrefire rifle is not your typical bolt action. In fact, it's a, gone the route of the straight pull, which is quite popular these days. Although Beretta tend to use their own words and call it a linear bolt system. It's got some really interesting features. It's got an interchangeable barrel system so you can exchange calibers out in the field or at home. You have a reversible ambidextrous linear bolt. So that's great for right or left-handed shooters. You have three uh, trigger weights built in and very easy to select. You have an eight lug bolt, a rotary type or 16 lug on the Magnum calibers. This gives you utmost strength and reliability. And there's also a sliding three position safety. Not only that, you have an integral Picatinny scope rail, detachable magazine, and a two piece high performance black polymer stock with spacers that you can alter the length of pull very easily. Central to the BRX1 is the aluminum chassis type action from which the stock, trigger group, and barrel form a union. The lower half bed's a removable barrel, which is interchangeable, as we've mentioned before, by two retaining screws, which come up through the forend, and also the detachable five-shot magazine with its day-glow orange sides and twin-release catches. You won't lose those in the grass. And it's very easy to load out of the rifle or in the rifle, and you can load it from the top of the action, left or right-handed. Now you can see the large stainless steel eight-lug bolt head that engages when fully forward into the rear of the barrel's chamber and abutments. There's a small inset extractor which removes the spent case and ejection is courtesy of the sprung plunger. One really nice feature is it's totally reversible. You can literally slide off the head, reverse it round, so you then have a left-hand ejecting bolt system. Manipulation of this linear bolt system is via the static bolt handle. It doesn't move at all. You just pull back and then forward. There's no movement of this bolt handle like some other straight pull rifles. They have two position. It feels very natural. There's no second click. It literally is in or out. So very safe. Another really good feature that Beretta put into the bolt. If you flip it over, there's a small plunger. Depress this, the bolt handle slides out. You can then put it into the other side of the bolt, slides back in, click that little catch, and then you have a left-handed bolt. So you can switch right to left-handed very easily. You can switch the bolt head left to right, so you can have a right-handed, left-handed ejector or left-handed, right-handed ejector, whatever takes your fancy, really. The stock is your typical tough black polymer molded system. Very sporterized, with quite a high comb on it, actually. They're epoxied together. It's a bit hollow and it resonates a little bit, but it's very strong and it is reinforced in the fore-end area. The comb, uh, although it's quite high, it's enough to avoid the bolt travel, so you can do a speedy bolt and keep your head down. Um, it still gives a really good cheek weld for correct scope of alignment. An often overlooked area is the gap between the barrel and the forend. Here you've got a really good gap, it's very well free floated, so there's no interference of the barrel when it's shot, so the harmonics and accuracy or consistency of the shot are kept to a premium. Another really unique and very nice feature on this BRX1 is the trigger unit. It's made from polymer and it easily slides out the front of the action. There's a little catch which is lifted up from the top by a, a screwdriver and it literally slides out and back down through the magazine housing. To adjust the trigger weight, there's three settings. So you literally slide the plunger upmost, middle or lower setting. We had it on the upper setting. This was factory set at 2.98 pounds. The barrels are really sensible size at 22 and a half inches in 308 Winchester here. It's got a 1 in 11 uh, inch rifling twist rate, so that would be good up to 180 grain um, bullet weights. Uh, it also has a muzzle thread of 14 by 1 metric and a really nice matte blued finish. You've also got a very nice cantilever Picatinny rail 
that projects over the top of the action without actual contact, so scope fitment is very easy. Next we'll test the uh, BRX-1 on the rifle range at 100 yards. Let's see how she shoots with factory and reloads. As you can see, the BRX1 shot some really nice groups at 100 yards, especially the Seiko and SST rounds. Uh, didn't really like the Winchester non-lead, but my rifles don't like those either. The Winchester subsonic, very, very quiet, very good for discrete Fox control. And we're also shooting the um, Hornaday Custom Light, which is quite a light 308. Hornaday's Custom Light 308 ammunition shot very well, so we decided to try those out on a simulated deer steel target. Later we tried it out in the field because the Rodeau season has just started here in UK. 